Welcome to the Game of Risk, everyone. I'm your host, Olive XC, a top player at this game. And today, we are doing Tutor Tuesday, where I review a subscriber game and help them and you, the viewer, get better at the Game of Risk. Today's game comes from a noob on a mobile, and I am showing the grand finals of the Classic Risk Championship. Just the first game, as that's what I always do on a Tutor Tuesday episode. This game is being played by the top six players uh, in the entire classic tournament they went through six prior rounds winning either a progressive game a five player 70 percent game or a four player true random 70 percent game and this is the finals whoever wins this six player progressive game with blizzards wins the entire tournament this is basically the highest level of risk that you can see and that's why i just wanted to show everyone what like a super high level progressive game is like and what are some of the best practices. One thing that I find really interesting immediately is there are two players that are very strong right now. The pink player in this game who is Arco as well as the white player. Our protagonist this game is Nubana Mobile who is right here by the way. What a handsome little fellow he is who is the black player. Now the first three players, uh, purple, yellow, and orange, they really didn't have to do uh, too much as their, their, their turns were pretty standard. They just have to spread out around the map, keeping themselves uh, open and available to attack. But white and pink are in a very interesting situation. White has a very strong play potentially going for Australia. The pink player has a very strong play of going for South America. It is important to keep in mind, though, that there is voice chat that is available, and the players have the ability to communicate with each other in advanced ways that normally cannot be done through the online app. The other players and at the highest level know that if somebody were to get a continent, and then they were to get five to six extra, two extra troops per turn, and getting an extra 10 to 12 troops in the long run, especially players 5 and 6 who will be getting the largest sets at 12 and 15, they may be able to potentially eliminate the purple player or the yellow player who will be getting the lowest sets at 20 and, sorry, at 4 and 6, and they can then potentially then take the game. For that reason, I really like everyone's decision to basically tell them, no continents, let's just play this out. So a beautiful starting end game like a by the players. The second thing that we want to see is like, how are, is everybody well positioned right now? When I look at the purple player, he is in mainly two spots in the Siberia region up top here, in the bottom of Africa, and this four in Iceland. At this point, his Africa bonus is very, very strong. I don't see anything really happening to that. Arco is kind of blocking that. He's the pink player, again, blocking this here. But at this point, I think if the purple player just updates their information in like uh, Siberia and Iceland, they're going to be very well spread out and in a pretty good position. The yellow player has, again, like three nice spots. Madagascar, one of the greatest spots on the board as it's very, you're able to attack hours in Africa while leaving yourself kind of blocked off by other players, in this case, pink and purple. Their main attacking army in North America. Notice how they have their spot right here. When you're in this spot right here, in like the Ontario area, you can attack in multiple directions while still giving yourself flexibility to attacking around the map. As well as in the Ukraine, beautiful for controlling the center of the board and being able to attack. And finally, just a little bit of Kamjaka to give themselves some maximum flexibility. This is just perfect, beautiful positioning by yellow. On the orange player, they have a beautiful spot here in Argentina, which is giving them, again, like a nice little spot to hide in. Holding on onto the Middle East, again, controlling the center. And again, just being located, just like a corner in North America. They're actually in every continent. Orange's position right now is absolutely incredible. Just absolutely beautiful play. And you can see the importance of spreading out and how hard it can be to eliminate a player for their cards. Now, our protagonist, a noob on a mobile, I would actually put him in the weakest position right now because he has nothing that's in North America or South America, or even Africa. He only has his spots mostly located in the center and one kind of good spot in Australia. But as the white player is kind of didn't really block this off, any player can go in and take out black at any given time. 
So this is a little bit dangerous for Noob on a mobile, but that's what happens at the highest level. There is going to be some luck that is involved uh, in these situations. And when I look at the white player this game, again, they have like a very good spot for themselves in Australia. They are a little stuck where they can't really attack outwards like uh, with this because they don't want to guard black, but they're also not giving themselves the ability to attack others themselves, which does weaken them a bit. But they still hold Brazil, which is again kind of blocking off the South America a bit. Again, a good spot in North America. Again, lots of options to attack without being blocked off. We have the spot here in Japan, which is very, very good. This, I think, is the strongest spot. It's a more defensive spot. Like, I wouldn't leave more than five here, but it gives very good flexibility to moving and then attacking uh, around the map. And then finally, we get to Arco, the pink player who has just, I think, been having some really solid results in free-for-all lately. Arco is mainly in two positions. Again, his position is not the strongest either, having a spot here in Africa, and then mostly everything being in a line in North America. So again, he's also like in a lot of danger. But I think ultimately, given the position that the players have been in, I think they all kind of played it off really well. I would put black and white in the weaker position, but all the other players have beautiful locations around the map, and they are ready and raring to go. So now that we've kind of highlighted how the players are doing, I'm going to fast forward ahead to when players are going into their five cards and they start turning in the sets. All right, and we are now coming down to when people are trading in the sets. The one things that I think that have changed since people have been kind of been attacking the past couple of turns, white is leaving their stack open. Noob on a mobile, I think it's in a little bit of a safer location and cannot be uh, eliminated. Orange is also pretty safe, being guarded by both like a pink and white. And they are in a, a very, very good spot. And Nubana Mobile also has a nice open stack here. And it's also guarding orange, is also getting guarded very well here by purple and yellow, which is creating some very, very good opportunities. Again, just such a very nice high level game. But it's really going to come down at the highest levels. Do people have sets on three or four? Do they trade in? Are they able to eliminate a player? with those trade-ins in order to get an advantage for themselves. That is the key challenge here that we're going to see. So we can see a new Bona Mobile is trading in. You notice as well, he's really picking his cards and where he wants to use them and where he thinks he gets it. Again, it's these very subtle level of what you need to keep in mind uh, in order to win. I think and also really another important thing is the pressure that a lot of players are going through right now. Because most players only get to maybe one finals like in their career. Like I've only made it to a quarterfinals of free for all tournament. Like the skill level of all of these opponents to make it this far is absolutely incredible. And they have to perform under pressure where they may only have one opportunity to potentially go for the win. One mistake and it costs them. It's that psychological element, right? When everything is on the line, even though like it's just you're playing for some gems, it's the glory of saying that you are one of the world's top risk players that is pushing 
everyone to their limit and they're seeing like a, what they can do. This is a moment that fights a champion from a championat. Yeah, and now we can see right now, now that everybody has traded in, now we're going to see who has kill lines to kill the other players and potentially take this game. Like uh, immediately, I can see pink has doesn't really have the best lines on purple right now because they has to look because it goes to like a like a big attack. When I look at the black player, the white player actually has pretty good lines. So Noob on a mobile does not have a set on four. Uh, white will be able to actually take them out very, very easily. That I see that as a, um, a very, like a much higher risk. Orange, I think, is safe because Orange is being guarded by so many players at once. So unless the board dramatically opens up, I don't see any significant changes occurring at that time. Yellow is guarded by purple and pink. So purple, I think, actually has some good lines on yellow. I just don't know purple if it's worth it for them to be eliminating yellow. They'd be able to trade in, but they won't be able to do like a further trade in. Also, as the sets would only be at like um, 20 to 25, they'd only gain a net couple of troops. And then as for white, well, since black, white is guarded right here by the 16, while white can kill black, black can kill white. So I don't, I think possibly yellow has a good line to take out the white player. Although it would take a lot of troops to do so. Like the 13 has to take out the 12. And the, and the one, this eight has to like uh, move in to attack. So it'd be very, very tight. And you're also having to be to attack um, other areas of the board as well to guarantee the kill. So people have to balance how do they want to attack and get the trade in. So purple does not have a set on four. So immediately this is very, very dangerous. You can see right now is yellow is look like they're gear gearing up for a kill on the purple player. But you can see as they are trying to um, determine it, they leave a couple too many troops. I think you need to make this like a 20 on a Kemjeka. And then you could have made um, this like a 10v8. You could also have made this like a 17 and maybe they would have been able to get the kill. However, even with um, getting the kill, they would have been stuck on five cards and I think they would have just got eliminated right away. They would have been able to chain anything else because it would have cost all of their troops and would not have been 100% roll. So waiting here was good, but then orange also does not have a set on four. So now the map is really opening up right now and a noob on a mobile. All these players are not having sets on four. The odds of having a set on four is around 75%. Because on medium-sized maps, you can get a wild card, which automatically guarantees you the set. So now with all of these players sitting on five cards, this leaves to the fifth and sixth players having significant advantages and potentially chaining the kills together. So now can white go for a kill on any of the players? And it looks like because white leaves a lot of troops on Japan, it's a very defensive move. I would actually say it's a bit of a mistake at the highest level, simply because they can't do anything with that 20. I would have left more troops like on this 17 to make it more available to attack the other pit players. And now I'm just going to pause here. Arco actually has an ability to go for a kill here on orange. And this is such a challenging kill. In order to do the kill, this 15 has to take out the 10. This 13 can be taking out the 5 and the 1. If you leave everything on the 20, it has to attack the 14, then attack a 4, then you have to leave like around 12 to a 13 to take out this 8. Then you have to attack this other 14 and the 4. But by making all of those attacks, you can then chain and kill the purple player afterwards with the next trade-in and then get a potential double trade-in afterwards. And this is what's absolutely incredible when I was seeing this in real time. This is such a challenging, incredibly talented kill to understand and make. And look at this, you guys. Arco should be swimming off around like 12 to 13. Yeah, he leaves 12. 
And look at that, he just had enough to get the kill. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Only thing I would have said is maybe save that towards the last bit right there. Because that was part that was risky, everything else was pretty much guaranteed. But now Arco is getting the 35 trade-in. But look at his time on the upper right-hand side, you guys. It's very, very low. He has to act extremely fast. He has to put 13 here and the rest up top here now to immediately eliminate the purple player from the game. And now look where that's. He has 30 seconds again. And now he has to chain another kill. But he's on eight cards. So he can immediately get another kill to take someone out and potentially take this. So pausing here, because again, I have a lot more than 30 seconds to share this with uh, all of you. Now, Arco's 20 is, sorry, the white player's 20 is stuck behind this like a 22. So killing white doesn't make sense. Uh, Arco has to be killing the black player here. If they leave uh, about 20, 21 troops here, and then they leave the rest of their troops on this three, this should guarantee the attack here. And then they have to take out the 17, split back three, and then go in, hit the 24, and like, end the 10. Because again, they're getting around like 85 troops uh, in total. They can then kill black, speed everything up, and take the game. But I'm looking at this from a post-game perspective. Arco is doing this from a pre-game perspective. You're immediately seeing he left too many troops right here, right? 29 is not enough time. And because of that, he's now run out of time, and he chose not to go for the attack because he didn't want other players potentially killing Nubana Mobile and then chaining and taking their own game themselves. So now we get to a very interesting element right now where the other players are talking and using the VC element because they're realizing how strong Arco is and how he may be able to potentially take the game. And people are saying we have to hit Arco and I think the yellow player makes a critical mistake here. First, they get a really horrible roll, right? That was very, very bad luck. But yellow player's only on 43 troops. And look, you guys, the black player has very, very good lines on them. So all the black player, I think, needs to do is put about, like, um, 10 to 15 troops on, like, in 69, and maybe put the rest, like, in a 17. And they need to maybe, like, take out the black player immediately. And instead, they leave everything down, so I think that makes it a little bit more complicated. But they leave it 12, but just enough to get to 100%. And then they take out the 10, and now look at this, you guys. They're going in a line. Yubana Mobile is a little nervous right now. You see his mouse is shaking because you can see how close the victory is to him right now. And now he gets another trade in. If he were to take out Arco, he could take the game, but at 122, this is uh, unlikely. It's also possible that he could try potentially taking out the white player right now. Uh, he has more than enough troops to be able to do it. However, it would be very risky uh, going for that kill. And this is because with Noob on a Mobile only being on two tr cards right now, and the Stark, the white player, being on uh, two cards, he would end up on four cards. We would not trade in and end his turn on five cards. Since he would be expending a lot of troops, Arco is already on 122 would be able to potentially path out, eliminate him, and take the uh, the game. Even though um, his 60 is kind of blocked, like the 38 would be able to potentially take out the remaining stacks because Noob on a Mobile will be sacrificing so many troops to be eliminating the white player. It's actually better, I think, to wait a little bit instead and then to see like, like a what happens and hope that you get that set on three. So you can see he's trying to, to take the... The white player right now and during the game like commentary because this was showing the kill pete strategy and you can see he has a set on three holy cow they're saying it was a mistake to not be killing white this was actually the much better move now so stark is just in a horrible spot um he, he's damned if he does damned if he doesn't if he gets a card he's he's going to be killed if he doesn't get a card he won't be growing fast enough and will uh just die so he's debating whether to be taking a card right now, and he does end up getting it. And now an Arco has a set on three, because he absolutely did need that set in order to get the kill on white, because Noob on a Mobile was guarding that stack right there. Now he is going for the kill on... He's potentially getting even a double kill right now. Holy cow, you guys. But... It looks like he left a cube too many troops 
in the Asia region. Even then, barely enough, we only had five troops left over. And even then, there's still a stack left in the Middle East. Absolutely incredible, given how the board has, like, uh, shaped up. And now, you guys, we get to the crazy ending. Nubana Mobile having the set on three. All he needs to do is attack. Like, he's not sliding, but it doesn't matter. He just has to get the win. I wouldn't be sliding at all right now because of how complicated this is. You have 60 seconds to be taking the board. You just have to concentrate, attack each territory. Is he going to get the win? And it looks like, you guys, he is a noob on a mobile, is our champion. He absolutely deserves to be like a, this excited. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. This is Olive XC, signing off.